The world's biggest rabbit was stolen from a home. A ladder might be named the official state tool of Tennessee. And India arrests two men who used monkeys to steal cash from victims. These are the weird stories for the Tuesday. Yes, it's the Tuesday. And this is Weird AF News. I'm your host, Jonesy. This is the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian. I have some some weird stories from around the world, guys. Far and wide, I bring you the weird. Come on. Lend me your ear. The world's biggest rabbit was stolen from a home. Oh, no. And right after Easter, a rabbit that was proclaimed the biggest in the world has been stolen from its home in Worcestershire. Police have said, I'm not sure if I pronounce Worcestershire correctly. It's something like that. I'm just going to say Worcestershire sauce from now on in the article. West Mercia police believe the 129-centimeter-long continental giant rabbit named Darius was taken from its enclosure in the garden of the property in Stulton overnight on Saturday. The rabbit was awarded a Guinness World Record in 2010 for being the biggest of its kind. The owner, Annette Edwards, has offered a 1,000-pound reward for the return of this large-ass bunny, saying it was a very sad day for her. Yes, we know, Annette. Of course it's a sad day. Your lovely furry little bunny. Not little, big. Your, bit, your, your lovely big giant bunny was stolen right after Easter. Ah, catch my breath here. Edwards pleaded on Twitter for her bunny. I didn't know people went to Twitter for their lost pets. I thought you, you're supposed to print out a photo of your pet and then staple it on telephone poles in the area of your neighborhood where the pet went missing, correct? I thought that's how you're supposed to get your pet back. So. <laughs> Nobody doing paper on telephone poles anymore? She went on Twitter to plead for those who took her bunny, Darius, to please bring him back, saying that he is too old to breed now. I guess she assumes that the rabbit was stolen for breeding purposes. I don't know anything about rabbit kidnapping operations, so uh, I'd imagine maybe they just wanted the biggest rabbit in the world. Maybe some... Somebody's daughter was like, I want my for my birthday the biggest bunny you can find. And then the father was like, all right, let me get my buddy and some ski masks. Let's go, let's go get the biggest rabbit we can find for my daughter's birthday. Uh, a police spokesman said, we are appealing for information following the theft of an award-winning rabbit from its home in Stolten, Worcestershire sauce. It is believed the continental giant rabbit was stolen from its enclosure in the garden of the property of its owners overnight on Saturday the 10th of April, 11th of April. If you have any information about the incident of the stolen big-ass bunny from Worcestershire sauce, please contact PC Darren Riley at this number that you can't dial anywhere else in the world. <laughs> Sorry, just having some fun with the, uh, with the uh, characters in this story. Now, now, I was very curious to see what this rabbit looked like in the flesh here. There's a video of Annette holding her big-ass bunny, and it's it's the size of a dog. It's a large bunny. I don't know how much this thing weighs, but, man, it's got to be 40, 50 pounds, this bunny. It would just make such a delicious stew, this bunny. I mean, imagine. <laughs> kidding, kidding, guys. Guys, come on, all right? I would never eat Darius. Which, can we also have a meeting about what a strange name that is? Darius for a bunny? That seems such a strange name for a bunny. Darius. Darius is not a bunny. Darius is like the name of a crocodile, like your pet crocodile, not your bunny. By the way, this bunny is Annette Edwards' fourth record-breaking rabbit. This bunny, Darius, took the title from his mother, as a matter of fact. Wow, she's been raising these... These bunnies to win prizes throughout the decades, it seems like. This must be why she mentioned that Darius can't breed. Uh, but, I mean, she could probably just breed another record-breaking bunny. She seems to be very good at it. It's just sad that, you know, Darius has gone missing. But maybe a good family has Darius and is taking great care of Darius. Nonetheless, if you happen to come across this big-ass bunny, Darius, and the bunny nappers, please contact the Worcestershire Sauce Police Department. The latter could become the official tool of the state of Tennessee. This says a lot about Tennessee. Tennessee lawmakers are going to be voting on whether or not to make the latter the official state tool. I don't even know they had state tools. 
I looked this up. I looked up state tools, United States states, official tools of states. All I could find was this article again and again, this Tennessee story, lawmakers voting on whether or not to make the latter the official tool. There's not a lot of information except for it's House Bill number 930. It was fired by, filed by Chris Hurt, and it's scheduled to be voted on this week. The bill states that the latter would be designated as the official state tool. <laughs> is this replacing another tool like the hammer? The, the, the latter, we could even argue, is this even a tool? It just seems like not a tool. Pliers, a screwdriver, that's a tool. Why would you choose the latter? What is the connection between the latter and the state of Tennessee? Is everybody short in Tennessee? Can nobody reach shit in Tennessee? Or is everybody just doing a lot of roofing in Tennessee? Is Tennessee the roofing capital of the world? I'm trying to think of what else you would need a ladder for. <laughs> uh, here's some other Tennessee's state symbols. Uh, the official state beverage is milk. <laughs> uh, the official state fruit is a tomato, which, is that a fruit? I suppose it is. It has, someone told me because it has small seeds inside that it's a fruit, but then wouldn't that make a cucumber also a fruit? I don't even know. I don't even know. That, it's just such a backwards ass state if you voted the tomato your official state fruit. I'm just going to say that right now. Of all the choices, uh, tomato. This makes more sense now when we're looking at the latter situation because you guys are choosing a backwards-ass tool as well. It's not really fitting for a tool. A hammer, a saw. This is a tool. The raccoon was adopted as Tennessee's official wild animal. Fabulous. And the Tennessee walking horse was named the official state horse in 2000. They have a state horse. And, you know, I, I tried to look up I just assume every state has an official tool. This doesn't seem the case to be the case. I think Tennessee's doing its own thing over there. And, you know, this is what happens when you just shove your face with moonshine for decades. You just, <laughs> you just start voting on s stupid shit like this. Is there anything going on in your state, Tennessee? I think there is. I have a feeling there's tons and tons of shenanigans going on, and yet your lawmakers are voting on whether to make the latter the official tool of the state. I think you guys ought to bring in a lot more dentists. Maybe you should spend your time bringing in dentists. I've seen the teeth on the on you critters from the state of Tennessee. You need dental care over there. You should be voting on making the uh, making floss the official tool of the state of Tennessee. <laughs> that seems more appropriate. Get some get some floss in there. Do you guys do yourselves a favor. <laughs> You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. <laughs> India arrests two men who were using monkeys to steal cash from unsuspecting victims. Two gentlemen who roamed the Indian capital using a pair of monkeys to rob victims have finally been arrested, the police report. The pair were apprehended after one victim complained to the police that three men carrying monkeys had surrounded and robbed him of 6,000 rupees, which is about 80 bucks. So I, this is not what I expected to be going on. I thought they had trained the monkeys to bounce around and steal people's wallets. It doesn't sound like that's the case. Three men carrying monkeys? <laughs> Give us your money. What are you going to do, shoot me? No, nah, man, I'm going to throw one of these monkeys at your face. Or I'll make you smell the monkey's butt. All right, all right, take my rupees. Take my rupees. Take them all. Take all the rupees I got in my robe. I keep my rupees in my robe. Authorities across India have been grappling with the menace posed by monkeys in Delhi and other very populated cities where they often enter homes in search of food. But it is illegal for Indians to capture monkeys under a 1972 law. Here's a quote from one of the officials. 
When the victim was sitting in an auto rickshaw, the men also entered the vehicle, asked one monkey to sit on front seat and another at the back. They took the money the lawyer had in his wallet and fled with the monkeys. They fled with the monkeys. They've been doing this for many, many years. Many, many, many years, we think. Police suspected the gang were behind other similar thefts over the years. Officers have set up some dedicated teams to track down these culprits. Teams, <laughs> teams of officers carrying bananas. Uh, they say they captured two of the thieves. The third thief is still at large. The monkeys have been captured and placed in an animal rescue center. Hey, they saved the monkeys from a life of crime. Way to go, officers. Monkeys are often trained in India as street performers, and incidences of these hairy simians attacking residents are actually not that uncommon. Last year, a troop of monkeys attacked a medical official. Oh, no. And they snatched blood samples of patients who had tested positive for coronavirus in, <laughs> in northern India. My goodness. They attacked a medical officer and stole the blood vials? Ma! Ah! I'd imagine you can train these monkeys to do all sorts of stuff, you know. Uh, but not just theft. You could probably train them for good, too. You, know, you could train the monkeys to do wonderful things. Uh, you know, maybe they could make, like, balloon animals for kids at birthday parties. Or maybe you could bring them to, like, a gender reveal party, and then they fart either blue or pink out their butt, and that's the gender reveal. Oh, the monkey farted pink. Oh, surely you're having a girl. Lovely. And then the monkey rips off someone's face. Oh, no, because all those gender re reveal parties, all, oh, they all go downhill. <laughs> That was ridiculous. I don't want to work. I just want to podcast in a closet all day. Hey, everybody. How are you? It's your host. Yes, you can trust me. I'll be here for you five days a week, bringing the weird news to you. And uh, so you're going to learn something. Sometimes you'll even laugh. I can't guarantee everything. Uh, I want to thank everyone who reached out to me, sent me articles. You can always do so by using the email included in the description of this podcast. Or just, you know, funnyjones at gmail.com. Uh, you can also send me articles at funnyjones on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, if you feel like calling the show, we always welcome calls. I say we, but really, I mean me. It's a one-man crew over here. The number six four six four five zero twenty twelve. 646-450-2012. Oh, yeah, I got a phone number to the show. Yeah, that's right. I'm high-tech, baby. I even got a website. Yeah. You don't believe me, do you? Yeah, I got a website, guys. Weirdafnews.com. Check it out. And when you're on that front page of weirdafnews.com, there's a, a few ways that you can support the show. You could click on buy Jonesy a coffee, cup of coffee. And uh, so you can buy me a cup of coffee or two. Uh, you, or you can buy me a cup of coffee and imagine that you're buying me a beer. That works, too. You could also join the Patreon. Patreon. Link is on the front page of weirdafnews.com as well. And you can support the show and get additional weird AF uh, content, also known as media. That's only available in the Patreon. It's exclusive content. You can also make a PayPal donation if you feel like supporting the show that, that way. Let's say you got your stimmy, right? You got a little bit left over from your stimmy check. You can just go right to weirdafnews.com and you can donate from there too. Or you don't have to do any of these things, man. You could just be you. You can just chill. You could just be the Buddha. You could just listen to the show. And, uh, you know, give me a shout out in your mind. You don't even have to pick up the phone. You can just, uh, you know, just whisper, I love you, Jonesy. To nobody. To nobody. And, and, and like, imagine I could hear it. You know, that's okay, too. Hey, however you want to do it, man. Just reach out. Give me your energy. That's all I ask for is a little bit of energy. Okay, clearly I'm overly caffeinated and out of my mind, so I'm going to wrap up this outro. I feel like I should give you some words of wisdom. Um, remember, remember, wherever you go, there you are.